Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. In today's video, we are starting off Brawl Week, a thing I do on my channel a couple weeks after a new set comes out where I take legendaries from the set and build a deck around them and I showcase five of them, one on every day of the week not including weekends. So starting us off, we have Xanathar Guild Kingpin. So this is going to be a Demir colored deck, and it's a legendary creature beholder, 5-6, and it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. Until end of turn, that player can't cast spells. You may look at the top card of their library any time. You may play the top card of their library, and you may spend mana as though are mana of any color to cast spells this way. So essentially, on our turn, we can play cards off the top of our opponent's library. And this whole deck is kind of built around that. So it's going to be a kind of demir control style of deck. We're going to try and whittle down our opponent's options, counter their stuff, kill their creatures, stuff like that, trying to get up to our commander. And then our goal is to kind of kill our opponent with their own stuff. And if Xanathar keeps getting killed, we have other ways to steal their stuff, including things like Kiora Best the Sea God and Ashiok, if we can get up to the alt. Um, you know, stuff like that, but generally this is going to be a Demir control deck trying to stall until I get Xanathar, and then I'm going to kill my opponents with their own stuff. So it's very, very interesting in my opinion. Um, it's not, you know, I think it's a slightly different take, you know, generally you see the Demir control deck and then, you know, oh, you're going to win with your commander, which is kind of what we're doing here, but how we win changes every time. Uh, you know, sometime I might win with dragons if my opponent's playing Tiamat or something, and sometimes we'll win just, you know, hitting them with Xanathar. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Why don't we just jump, um, okay, why don't we just jump into this? Uh, so we are going to be playing Xanathar, take your cards as I named the deck because that is the whole point of it. Um, and of course, this is just the first episode of Brawl Week. We have some really awesome, you know, commanders. Not all of them are the highest power, but they're all really, really fun. If I were looking at it, like every time I do a Brawl Week, there's always one commander where I'm like, eh, this isn't my favorite, but it's fine. And this time I like all five commanders I picked and I'm really excited. Now this week, this set's Brawl Week is a week delayed. Normally it would have been last week uh, and that's just due to some personal stuff. So yeah, you know, starting with Innistrad, you might see it a little bit sooner. Um, also with Jumpstart Historic Horizons. We I may be doing a Historic Brawl Week if they do a Historic Brawl event, which I would assume they would. Either way, we are going up against what looks like a dungeon deck, which I actually surprisingly haven't seen in all of my testing of these decks. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to see how this goes. This hand is fine. We're going to have to make sure we get blue with Fabled Passage, and I actually might do that... Um, turn one, just because I don't have a turn one play, all the rest of my cards enter untapped anyways, so yeah, we're going to get a island, um, next turn we are going to s uh, foretell all runs of Epiphany, let's see, we are pulling the more expensive cards in our deck, which does kind of suck a little bit, but yeah, we are going to foretell all runs of Epiphany, which only reduces it by one, but you know, we have nothing better to do with our turn. Uh, it sucks that we didn't get a second blue, because neutralized still really isn't, you know, turned on. So we'll, I'm going to put out Field of Rune, and if they play a land, I may, you know, Field of Rune it, get a... Yeah, so what we're going to do is we are actually going to just destroy that, um, which is actually a mistake. I just made a play mistake, because um, this gives it to him untapped, so then he can play his commander. That's my bad. Um... Yeah, I should not have done that. I should have waited till his end step. I just got excited because I'm like, ooh, non-basic land I can target. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I need to sometimes slow down. But, you know, sometimes it's hard when you're filming and doing all of this at the same time. Uh, so Hama Pashar is going to be pretty good. It's going to turn that, you know, scry one into scry one twice or gain one to gain two. Um, but at this moment, they don't have any way of venturing into the dungeon. So that's going to do it. I could counter it, but I just really don't see that being worth it. I expect he's going to go into Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Um, I assume. No, Lost Mind of Pandelver, which is the more, like, I don't know, not appropriate, but the more, you know, the safer route that you're probably going to get more value out of. Um, 
but we'll see. So then I get swung up for two because I'm dumb. No? Okay. Um, I think if we can get just get them to like, we can save that. So a couple things going through my mind right now. I would love to hagger a mauling. I'd love to shadow his verdict. <laughs> verdict. All right, we're just gonna actually pass the turn. Um, and what we're gonna do is we are going to kill Hamapashar if they get another venture trigger. If they don't, I am instead going to um do save mana to activate Faceless Haven to block potentially, um, if they decide to swing with Hama Pashar. Um, and then if not, I could cycle neutralize. I probably should have countered that. See, again, so focused on explaining everything. Um, it's honestly fine. I'm going to Shadow's Verdict next turn, even if I get the mana for Xanathar. So I'm going to take three here, six here. All right, we're going to sack Liliana st uh, Steward Shadow's Verdict, getting rid of everything on their board. Yeah, I think it's going to go well. Uh, sucks that I didn't actually like spend any mana that turn. Not great uh, for uh, the tempo and all that, but whatever. Uh, we can make them discard a card. I don't know, Liliana Steward's a weird card in this deck. I just kind of like it. <laughs> it's a uh, one do for one, and then just... Eh. I don't need it or it's going to die to something. Just make them discard. Okay. We're going to just get rid of everything. It also got rid of their stuff out of their graveyard, which is pretty awesome. Although I wouldn't expect this deck to have too much to do with that. Um, I am going to play this as a land, which does suck. I love playing it as a kill spell, but then we can guaranteed cast Xanathar next turn, um, or even all runs Epiphany, but um, we will see. Especially if he's going to take this turn off to like set up uh, his venture triggers, because you know if he's paying three mana to venture into the dungeon, that does not feel great for him, probably. I mean, you know, six mana... Or seven mana total, but spending a lot of it on that does not seem amazing. Um, we are going to cast Xanathar. Hope it survives a turn. Um, yes, I probably could have waited for a blue mana and then, you know, foretell, keep a counter spell up. But what's the fun in that? If we untap, I think we're going to be doing pretty well. We have three counter spells in our hand. Um, ah, no. Tragic. Um, so they have, they, you know, they are running out of cards. Um, I'm one off being able to cast them again. I'm not worried about it. I could cast them right now if I wanted to. Um, what are the odds that his last thing's removal? Doesn't have anything in graveyard. It's a graveyard. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here is, cast it and just hope, again, not playing the most efficiently, but I'm just trying to have fun with it. Um, that does suck at making all of our gutter spells cost five, um, but well, it is what it is. Concerned about, a... no, he's not going to board wipe. Okay. Guess I should have saved up for the board wipe. Cool. Let's just end turn. I know I could have faceless havened, but I'd like to save the Sublime Epiphany. Should have countered that. Oh my gosh, this is a game full of misplays today. All right, I'm going to, like, focus up here. Not going to make any more mistakes. Um, we're just not going to let that happen.
I'd like something that isn't a counterspell, please. Thank you. That is almost exactly what I wanted. Hmm. Okay. So I have enough mana to bolt Sublime Epiphany and Eat to Extinction. So I'm going to hold it um, and just wait for our opponent to do something, generate some value. Sublime Epiphany will replace itself in my hand. Um, maybe we can do something interesting. Yeah, I don't care about that. You can pay three mana to equip that, and then I will murder Luminous Broodmoth. Um, yeah, I think, uh, saving up the kill spells will be a good thing. Alright, I'm just gonna swing. Seems like they have some sort of instant speed interaction. Just based on the fact that it's pausing at every possible, uh, stop. Could have all runs epiphany there, swung in again, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't want to end up having to return this to his hand, so we're going to counter that, return something to his hand, and then draw a card. We're going to return the dungeon map, and then I'm going to draw a card. Yeah, okay. Um... Hmm. He's very much, he's keeping a lot of mana up. We're just going to all runs epiphany here. Basically use it as draw a card. Um, yeah. Draw a card, make two, two, two one ones. Okay, Disdainful Stroke. I like that. So casting this leaves us with two mana open, with which includes a Disdainful Stroke. So yeah, we're going to go to combat. We're going to hope that the removal causes four or more and just go for it. The, the point of this deck is Xanathar, and I shall play Xanathar. All right. And if we, we're just going to hope removal is something expensive. Um, It's not... <laughs> Hey, we got to keep Xanathar technically. Um, if we get a, a bounce spell, we could maybe do something with it. See, um, still a creature that uh, can swing. So, yeah, we're just going to destroy this. They only have a mana rock and their commander. So, both of us are running really low. The difference is. I have more guards and a Faceless Haven that can just keep beating people up. Honestly, just going to save the counter spells and try to win this through traditional control means. It kind of sucks we didn't get to do fun stuff with Xanathar, uh, and I did make a ton of mistakes this game. Um, but, you know, it's magic, it's brawl, it's meant to be fun. Um, I think we're going to end up winning this. Yeah, I don't care about that. Yes, he can venture, and there's so much mana that, you know, maybe makes a 1-1, one, one, but I'm just saving it for something that can actually impact the board majorly. Okay. I assume they're making one, one a 1-1? One, one? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Equipping the torch to it. We're not... All right, we are going to put a 1-1 one, one counter on Xanathar, and then we are going to take three damage to draw a card. Do, do, do. 
All right, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, probably gonna block uh, to avoid death. Um, and then if somehow there is a, a attacker, we can always turn Faithful Haven back into a creature. But then again, that would require a spell, which we can pretty much counter anything. So we essentially have won this game. Um, we can stop that. Oh, I mean, we still have lethal. And they have no mana. Um, oh, I guess they have one mana. Maybe they do something... Um, but, yep, so that game was won by a more traditional control style of effect. I create lots of little creatures and just chip away while stopping the opponent from doing anything. Um, not my favorite way to win in Magic, but if we would have gotten Xanathar down and I could have started stealing all of his stuff, it would have been pretty fun. Um, so yeah, that is a lesson to learn from this, and I've learned. You should always have a counter spell ready. I just, I really want to show you guys Xanathar, and I was like, what are the odds, you know? But the odds are quite high. Removal is a must-run um, in Brawl, like, high amounts of removal, I should say, specifically. Yeah. We are going to go with that. Um, All right, let's just check for traps, see what their hand looks like. Huh. Oh, okay, they don't want to play. All right, that's fair. Hand disruption is kind of mean, but it is also very, very powerful. Um, so yeah, that's a good win for us. Uh, we're going to play one more game. I, I'm going to play a game until I can act have Xanathar activate at least one. So this could end up being like an hour-long video if I never get Xanathar down. And that is a lesson. It is a six cost commander. And, you know, by the time you get to that, your opponent's probably going to have answers or just already want to concede the game. So that is an issue. Maybe you want a lower cost Demir, you know, creature, planeswalker, whatever, uh, helming the deck that can get you more of that value in the early game where it matters a little bit more. Because um, once you get to that turn, if you're not dead um, and you have the ability to just take a turn off to cast Xanathar... Um, you know, it, it can be very, very, you know, it can be good when you play Xanathar, but it also just, you're probably already winning. So it's, it's one of those tough decisions. Now, this hand isn't my favorite. Now, turn three, we can play Midnight Clock. Turn four, we can play Ebb and Death. If, no, we can just play Ebb and Death. This is dual land. Uh, it looks like, you know, just mono white with a dragon at the helm of it um so yeah i i i would just or foretell all runs epiphany but i do want to keep the heartless act open in case some shenanigans happen all right here i'm not going to keep it open just to keep this going midnight clock which we can get started hopefully we empty our hand by then um all runs epiphany we can definitely foretell shark typhoon we could cycle so, like, we can pretty easily empty our hand, like, two mana, two mana, and we get rid of these two cards. Two mana, we get rid of this card, so six mana to get rid of three cards in our hand, and then, yeah, but, of course, this is still really far away. All right, interesting. So, that's kind of annoying. We are playing a... playing a control style deck so that that obviously isn't my favorite thing in the world so what we're gonna do is we are going to play dangerously and play ebb and death even though that has flash again making mistakes here i actually don't know if i've ever played ebb and death it's been in this deck as just this thing that like um you know as this thing where it's like oh i can keep bringing it back you know kind of value outvalue my opponent <laughs> but I just don't think I've ever ended up casting it. But it didn't end up mattering. Um, did I learn from my mistakes? And should I save for two more mana? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we are going to, you know, pay two for this. We are going to 
save up the blocker and just hold up our counter spell, kill spell, stuff like that. Even Shark Typhoon as well as Tyrite Sanctum can be a nice little, I don't want to say ambush, but it's something we can do. We do have to keep in mind that if an, a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or permanent control will prevent one of that damage. So we really only have a four power creature here. Um... Yeah, I think I'm blocking. So the reason I'm blocking is because they're going to trade, but since this has flash, I, can't I play this like right now? Yeah, I can. Cool. That's what I thought. Like, I think it counts opponent's creatures. That's why I put it in the deck. Cool. It's not that amazing. Um... We can play Ebon Death once again. This is really where Ebon Death is really good, is when you're trading. Because, yeah, you can trade. It's a 5-2 for 4. And then just replay him at your end step. Of course, this sword is going to maybe tap him down, which does kind of suck. But, um, whatever. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to save for Shark Typhoon. Again, just trying to get two mana so that I can have Negate open with that. Um, there's no point in not swinging. The Sword of I or Icing Death is going to tap down Ebon Death. Um, so it just makes sense to swing out. Um, yeah. Okay, so if he swings with dragons at Disciple, we make Faceless Haven a creature, kill dragons Disciple. If not, we cycle Shark Typhoon to make a 4-4 four, four and block. Alright, let's pay 4 for this. Uh, which makes a 4-4, four, four, which you can block the Monk of the Open Hand, which is terrifying because if he can cast two spells, you know, our Shark is going to die, but if our Shark dies, I'm not that worried about it. Okay. So I guess they trade. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Um... We have the extra land here, but unfortunately it's a tapped land. So what we're gonna do is put a plus one plus one counter on this and make it a zombie dragon god. Swing for five essentially, leave open mana. Uh, I'm, I So what I should have done that turn is played Hagra Mulling as Hagra Brood Pit. Played, taken the extra turn, played Xanathar, and had the mana op up for negate. I don't like this, but I also... This is a very, very powerful card. Is it worth my kill spell? I would have to use this one. No. Fortunately, no. But we did bait some of his removal, which he was definitely saving for my commander. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Replication Ring. Replicating Ring, I should say. Um, so on the next turn upkeep, it's going to shuffle my hand into my library. So we're going to play this as a land. And we are going to remove this. And we are going to pay the extra one. And then we have two mana plus the extra one to cast Heartless Act. And then Negate is actually going away. Which is funny because we've been saving up all this mana for it. Actually, I can't cast anything because uh, Elspeth conquers death. So, yep, goodbye to our hand. It's been good knowing you. Um... 
could have done something in response to it but let's see do i get anything neutralize and a bunch of lands i don't see it being incredibly wise to yeah eh, whatever we're just gonna kick this i don't see it being incredibly wise to play our commander here uh just hard to defend it um next turn will be the turn he's gonna get one of his creatures back probably dragon's disciple if i were to guess next turn xanathar having the mana open to neutralize something which is even better than having a negate putting it on baneslayer angel that does definitely suck uh it has protection from you know demons and dragons which we don't have to worry about yep just making sure nothing in here is like secretly a demon uh it does have protection from baseless haven so that is something we do actually have to think about um all right we're gonna play swamp we're gonna play xanathar whenever you or another permit okay so we are gonna have to pay one mana to activate xanathar essentially wow we have a lot of mana this is the really greedy play and i'm not gonna do it um But what I can do is do this, which is still greedy. If he has removal at this exact moment. Yep, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Whatever, we're stealing Baneslayer Angel eventually. I still have the Neutralize. I can afford to neutralize and do this barely. Okay. Good for you. I I don't exactly understand why that was done but whatever um yeah that's really weird so we have the mana for neutralize when he casts his commander down the extra whenever you are permanent you control the observe spell ability nothing about spells could create a one one but i just i'm just gonna say no to that we we have so much mana that Sublime Epiphany can act as our counter spell from here on out. Probably gonna tap a one one or something. He doesn't have any removal spells, which means we finally get to see Xanathar do its thing. Uh, we do still need to win this game. Still very losable. All right. Why, do, why does this person have to be playing such garbage cards in their deck? Um, we're going to play Kiora Best of Sea God as our kind of win con to steal Bane Slayer Angel. Um, we have the Sublime Epiphany. Which we do need to save the mana for, which, of course, Kiora Best of Sea Gods really like took a lot of my mana. Still feel like it was worth it, though. Yeah. So we, when we Sublime Epiphany, we create a copy of the 8-8. Eight eight. Also, we get to know everything they draw. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to counter the spell, return something, create a token that's a copy of another creature and draw a card. So we're going to, what's the first one? Return target online permanent. We're going to return the Bane Slayer Angel because they don't have enough to cast it. We're going to copy the 8-8 eight eight, and I'm going to draw a card. Oh my god, I did not account for that. That was almost awful. Oh, I forgot that, that as soon as I target their stuff. All right, so we didn't actually cast anything with Xanathar, but we did get the ability to go off. Um, so that's how the deck wants to play, is it wants to just outvalue our opponent, get out Xanathar as our kind of win con, and that and then win. So yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Brawl stuff as the week goes on. I will see you guys in the next one.